You can take your favorite top pattern and turn it into a dress. To see how that's done, stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing, no limits in your sewing, if that sounds redundant. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, continuing with my relaxed sewing vibe that I've been having these last couple of days where I've been taking patterns I have already made and loved, giving them a tiny twist, not that much, but just a few things that motivate me, you know, in this little tiny phase, which thankfully I am feeling much better about. In the past, when um, I'd lost my sojo, I would just stop sewing, basically. But having the channel really motivates me and it's like, it just pushes me, <laughs> you know, I don't want to stop the channel. I have put so much effort and work and I can see that the channel's growing, that you are all enjoying the content and so I am not allowing myself to stop sewing. I've just sort of changed the way I've been sewing for these last couple of days and I think that's been really good for me, allowing myself to be motivated by fabric, picking beautiful fabric and matching it to something I already know how to sew and that is just relaxing for me. Make something easy, I know what to do. When I already made a specific garment, muscle memory kicks in and I remember all the steps I've done, I don't have to look at instructions, so I can just do what I like to do, sit on the machine and just sew to my heart's content. I mentioned that a top pattern can also be a dress. This is totally true for most patterns and with small modifications, you can just turn that into a dress. Last year, I made the Dana point top by Itch to Stitch as a pattern tester. I would say it was around August maybe last year, just exactly a year ago. I have a full video on the channel that shows super cool sewing techniques there like favoring and just just awesome things. A, a well-drafted pattern that fits is super feminine, super flattering. So I actually have this one with me, not like the crystal coves that I've left in Chile for next summer. I made this top in this really lightweight cotton. It's basically she and it was one of the recommended fabrics because this top is fully lined. So it's got a little bit of like embroidery eyelets and things there. You can see the features of the Dana Point. It's a really delicate v-neck with its modest. It has little pleats there on the shoulders. I put a thousand buttons, you don't have to put so many. And then there's tucks at the waist. So it's just like small areas. I think they're six to seven centimeters long. And they're all marked in the pattern piece. They're not at all the same height on the front because there is shaping for the bust. So some of these are a bit higher and then they go lowering like that. So there's three here, three there. On the back, there's three there and there's three there. So lots of these little tucks, <laughs> super fun to sew. There is a side bust out there and this will vary according to your cup size. You know, I sew a C cup woven patterns for each to stitch come in cups of A through to double D, so that will differ. And so it's just a really nice, lovely design. I really, really want to make it again. You basically cut the pattern twice and it's fully lined inside, you can see there. So all the seams are finished neatly in there. Okay, so here is the front side and you can see the buttons there. So this is inside out. You can see that there's no facing or anything because Everything is finished here with the lining piece that is the same as the main piece. So you use the same seam allowance all the way around the neckline, around there, down to the bottom. And then the lining is sort of separate there with its own separate hem, right? So that is how this is made. And I've been thinking, how can I make this same pattern that I love the feet, I love the style, I love everything about it without having to self-line? Because let's be honest, you know my thing with fabric and the amount of fabric I buy, I usually just enough. Like I don't usually buy more than what I need. And I have a stash of random cuts of fabric that range usually from 1.2 meters to 1.5 meters. And so if I can fit a dress in there without having to line it, it's better for me. So I needed to modify the main feature here, which is this area. 
So I didn't want to cut the pattern twice and have to sew it all there with the seam allowance and all that. I wanted, I didn't want to have a facing either. I didn't want to like draft the whole facing because look at all these lovely pleats that come from the shoulder. How would you have a facing in there? It would just, you know, if a facing is not appropriate for what I wanted to do. So I got to thinking about the recent sewing techniques I've been using with each to stitch patterns as well. And just recently, it just this I've got it on now, the Corsica dress. But I've got the top here to show you and I've got others as well. <laughs> but basically from the center piece there, the front center, it's not a separate band or a separate facing piece that finishes the buttons. It's just from the center it's extended and then that gets folded in twice. That gets top stitch there. You can see that on both sides. It's really nice and sturdy and that's what does the crossover for the buttons. Very neat. And so this type of button placket that is integrated to the main front piece I've seen it several times, not in, only in the cossage top. Also, at the beginning of the year, I made the Bond shirt and I made it out of chiffon and it's a beautiful blouse. And yeah, I use this the same technique here as well. It's the same exact technique I've told you where from the front center, you just have a piece that's a bit longer and then it's folded. So I did a different, I did a different finish for this one because it's chiffon but you were supposed to fold that in and then top stitch it down like, you, like I did with the cossage top. That's how mine looks like inside. I did bind the ends because it's chiffon and I didn't top stitch it down, but the principle is the same. From the center comes that extra bit that you fold back down. And then I have the Montana shirt that I also made in chiffon. I made this one last year. I did the, the version with the ties on the front and this also, for the buttons, the center there is longer and then you fold it in, interface it and then top stitch it down. And so, you know, when you've done this several times, you think, I wanna do that. I wanna do that with the Dana Point top, but I wanna make it a dress. I really wanna make it a dress and I've been thinking about making it a dress for ages. I get distracted by new patterns, new pattern tests, new ideas, and every time I want to repeat a pattern with something new, I get distracted. At this stage, I'm not doing that. I really want to materialize what I've been thinking about. And so, in Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you how to modify that front neckline on the Dana Point top that is supposed to be self-lined, and how to do that, because it, it is a V neckline. So I don't have to just add on here and fold it. I have to do some sort of uh, thing to true it out to here so that it matches the shape of the V. So I'm gonna show you that in up close and so personal and I'm also going to show you how to simply have lengthened it into a dress. This top is perfect for a dress, all this waist shaping um, and it's just up to mid hip. I mean, just, just longer with all this waist shaping is gonna give her a really nice flowy skirt without being super full. So totally my jam and I can't wait to show it to you. But first, up close and so personal. Let's get into it. I have the original pattern underneath the tissue paper. This is a size 14 and I have traced everything around and then from the hem of the top, I have lengthened it keeping that same curve and then keeping that same A-line shape and I've added 37 centimeters. 37 centimeters is about 15 inches extra because I wanna make this a dress that will hit just above the knee. Now, the original pattern you can see there, I've marked the seam allowance, 5 eighths of an inch, because this pattern gets cut twice, and one of these layers is aligning, but I don't want to do that. I wanna do like a, a, a button band. So I have marked the seam allowance there all the way down, 5 eighths of an inch, 
and I'm gonna fold that in. Okay, so that seam allowance has been folded in or disappeared. And this is actually the center, like the, the raw pattern. And I want to create an extension for a button band. So I have added on to there one and a half inches from here to there to the edge of the paper all the way down. I've folded the paper right to the edge there and then I've folded again three eighths of an inch right there because this is how this is gonna look inside. So I want all that extra fabric to be here that I can fold a narrow one and then another one and then this will be the button band. To true this neckline here, I have to cut now the paper following the shape of the original pattern that you can see behind there. So that line right there. Okay, so I have cut all that excess paper I had following the shape of the pattern. This has been already folded like the fabric is going to. And now when I open this paper, this is how it's gonna look. And that's how it looks when a pattern has been true. This is the shape you're gonna cut. And when you fold it, everything's gonna match on the shape there. So this is my new front pattern piece. Instead of lining it, I'm gonna do a button band. I'm gonna finish the neckline and the arm side with bias binding. And that is the change I'm gonna make to create this top into a dress. What I'll do with the back is I'll just add paper to the bottom here and stick that on there because I don't need to make any changes. I have placed my length and pattern pieces onto this beautiful crepe. It's a non-directional fabric and I always buy that type of fabric so that I can place pattern pieces like this. So one in one direction, one on the other and it doesn't really matter. For this size 14, I am going from one fold there to the edge of the selvage. So using the total width of the fabric, I suppose for a size 16 and above this layout won't work, but it could always be adjusted by shifting these a little up and a little down. You still use much less fabric with this type of layout. So from the end of the fabric there to here, I've used 44 inches, 112 centimeters. And my aim is always to make a dress with 120 centimeters. Now to finish armholes and neckline, I will be using my store-bought satin bias binding that is, I've got in navy blue that will match the background. And I will happily make self bias binding if I have like pieces I can make it out of without having to use extra fabric. So I have a fair amount here and I'm not happy to waste this on bias binding if I can make another garment from there, like a cami top. So that is my economical fabric layout for this dress in 112 centimeters. I made my dress out of crepe fabric and the print is just beautiful, beautiful by my standards. <laughs> it's got a navy blue background with some like burgundy reddish uh, things. Well, here it is. <laughs> It is just so beautiful and it's crepe, it's slightly sheer. And there you can see the little pleats there. I have finished the neckline with bias binding and the arm side sleeveless. This is the original pattern just as is, no changes there. Now, the difference about this one and a regular sleeveless tank is that the shoulder is up higher, so it's up here and it finishes higher and it's slightly like a racer back at the back just slightly not like a racer back like you're not showing your shoulder blades or anything but there is a little bit more skin on view here at the shoulders at the back the front i find is very covered like very good it's just that it doesn't start at the shoulder there it starts there the fabric and then up to there i put a lot of buttons on this dress navy blue buttons uh, they aren't the smallest buttons. I think these are like five eighths of an inch buttons ish. And my preferred distance between button holes is five and a half centimeters or two and a quarter inches. So that's how I measure. And then I go all the way down. Super fun to put a lot of buttons, and my machine is making great button holes, so I never mind that. And I'm going to turn this inside out so you can see the tucks at the waist and how this integrated button placket came about. And it turned out great. I mean, 
I'm gonna do this all the time now, unless I really wanna make this as a dress fully lined like I did the top, but then that takes double the fabric, you know? <laughs> so there it is. You can see that because I trued it, it continues up and follows the shape of the V there. And then the bias binding is tucked under there. You've seen me do this technique before and I will link down below a video where I show it fully. And yeah, so then it starts going down and everything's been top stitched there. So very nice finish. I think it finishes the front exactly like I wanted without modifying the look of the pattern, the fit, anything. It's just the finishing is different. But actually the shape, the size of the front, everything is exactly the same. And here you can see the little tucks there at the waist. There's three, one, two, three. The thing is when you do these little tucks, you have to press them towards the center. And then on the right side of the dress, the little tucks will be pointing out to your hip. Sometimes that can be a bit confusing. So that's done at the back there too. And this is just great. I think an even easier version of this dress would be to make the whole dress just like this without any of the tucks at the waist. Just leave it and then it just it's like a trapeze dress if you don't do the tucks. And if you're into that sort of style and that style suits your body shape, I think it would be an amazing dress in that style. Or you could just make a sash with the same fabric and tie it around your waist to just bring it in or just use a belt. So I think I would try that option in the future because everything about this dress, I love the way it fits. And it goes down to just above my knee. I did nothing fancy with the hem. It's been surged and folded up in a narrow hem, three eighths of an inch, nothing fancy. I didn't really need to hand stitch because I actually did top stitch down this by binding. You know, my, my self-imposed rule, if I have top stitching around the dress, I feel at liberty to sew the hem by machine usually. <laughs> so that's what I've done. Here you can see my dress on. It's just the flowiest dress. The shaping everywhere is fantastic. And of course I knew this because I had already made the top. This is just a bit longer. Here coming closer, you can see the thousand buttons, the little tucks at the waist that give it shaping. There's still quite nice ease at the waist. Nothing is tight or constrictive. At the back, the shaping is excellent with those little tucks. They are genius. Shaping at the bust and the cup size is perfect. I just really love this dress. Now up close, you can see the neckline a bit more. It is modest. You can see what I was talking about, the arm side being a bit more scooped out at the back and that it starts closer to your neck. So you have your shoulders a bit more exposed. There are the cute pleats there on the shoulder. Super cute. And yeah, you can see my shoulders there. <laughs> Last little twirl, and this is just a dress to love. This is a fabric to love. The combination of these two, I am extremely happy with. you to dig up those patterns that you've already made that you already love and make them again in a different way whatever way a dress can be a top and a top can be a dress in this case I knew I love the top I knew I love the fit it's just the perfect top that can also be a dress because of all the features the shaping at the waist is beautiful at the back and now I have two and this one was so easy. There was absolutely zero stress with making this. I knew what the outcome was gonna be. And just looking at this fabric made me really excited because this fabric is like my jam. My affiliate link is down below in the description box for this pattern and all of each two stitch patterns if you are interested. If you purchase through there, I make a small commission from that sale and that helps support the channel. 
If you're enjoying the content and you find it useful for your sewing, consider watching a few more videos on this channel. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.